Doom 64. It's been one of the better experiences I've had with Doom games recently. Let's dive right in. Welcome to a Percurrent Game Review. Doom 64 was released in 1997. It was released by Midway Games and is a Nintendo 64 exclusive. Well, it was a Nintendo 64 exclusive until 23 years later when it was finally released onto just about everything in 2020. So my experience with Doom 64 goes way back to the 2000s. Well, actually to about the time it was being released in 1997. I remember getting a magazine. I can't remember what magazine it was. It was a Game Informer or something like that. I don't know. Or like a Nintendo game magazine. And I remember it having an ad in there for Doom 64. I remember it having a list of every single monster that was in the Doom franchise up to that point. And I remember just eating it up and being super stoked. But I never got to play the game because I didn't have a Nintendo 64. I had a PlayStation. At the time, I hadn't even played through the original. The first time I ever played Doom was on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive using the 32X attachment. And that game is just got a terrible rap for being one of the worst versions of Doom. But for me at the time I played it and I couldn't get past the third level, Toxin Refinery. I got as far as Toxin Refinery and it just scared me so much that I couldn't play the game anymore. So I turned it off. Those pink demons scared the crap out of me as a kid. Anyways, I thought it was so mysterious and cool, but too scary to play. But it kind of stayed with me for years until finally it was ported onto the PlayStation. And the PlayStation had one of the best ports for Doom. And I absolutely loved it. So then when a friend of mine who got a Nintendo 64 and got Doom 64 in the 2000s told me about it, I was stoked to pick it up and play it. But when I actually did play it, I actually didn't like it that much. Now, my friend was all like, oh, it's not the same as Doom. It's different, different, different. Oh, it just doesn't feel like Doom, which was the sentiment around Doom 64 since it came out in 1997. Everybody said that about the game. And I think there was a few things that kind of created that sentiment. One, it was on a console. Now, if you go back to the 90s, there was this big PC versus console war. All the fanboys of the PC would come out and be like, all the first person shooters on the console stink, and all the ports of the first person shooters on the console stink. That's just how it was. So there was this big rivalry and everybody was like, Doom 64 on a console, it's gonna be terrible because it's not on the PC. So already people had negative attitudes towards it. And then, once you actually did play it, it was on that really weird Nintendo 64 controller. That controller was just not set up to play Doom. I remember playing it and just being like, oh my gosh, how could you get through this game? The controls are just so hard to manage. And this is because I was used to playing the PlayStation 1 port of Doom. The PlayStation 1 port of Doom was just so smooth. It was, it felt so good using the R1, L1 buttons to strafe and then turn the head using the left and right arrows, forward and back, moved you forward and backwards. And then your little like triggers allowed you to strafe back and forth and switch your guns. And they even allowed you to pause the game and switch your guns because it was just hard sometimes with how fast paced the game could go. And the port didn't just have Doom, it had Doom 2 on it. So you got all the levels. It took some of the levels out of the original and replaced them with unique levels specific to the PlayStation port. And it was absolutely fantastic. I remember years later playing it on the PC and being like, oh, this level is different and that level is different. And oh, what about this level? What about that level? Overall, it was just a really good port and it was a little bit different, so it kept things interesting. And everybody was like, this is the best port. This is such a great game. It's so fantastic at the time. So when Doom 64 came along and used the very hard to use Nintendo 64 controller, it was like, it's inferior to even the original Doom port on the PlayStation, which kind of made sense because it kind of was from like a controller perspective. The sound design of the game, all the demons sound different, all the weapons sound different, the music sounds different, everything sounds different. So it's not the same. And Doom was such a big deal in the 90s that there were so many fanboys of it and they all liked the original games. Everybody knows that it's hard to please that type of audience, right? 
Doom came out, it was awesome. Doom 2 came out, it was awesome. And because of that momentum, id Software just released Doom after Doom after Doom. Final Doom, exactly the same as Doom 2. No changes, but it had worse level design, but nobody cared because it was just more Doom and everybody wanted just more Doom at the time. But eventually, as time went on, the rest of the world decided to move on. They were tired of playing the same old Doom. Well, except for the mega fans, because they wanted to play the same old Doom, so that's what they kept on doing through all the plethora of mods that were coming out. So when Doom 64 came out and it was a little different, they were like, nah, we'll just play the mods that are the exact same as what we've been playing, because that's what we want to play. And the rest of the world was like, Doom 64 isn't that much different than the original anyways, and we're kind of tired of the original Doom, so we're just not going to play it. So it just kind of came out a bad time and got a bad rap because of it. So it had a couple things against it, but it was actually a fantastic game. I didn't really get to get into it until it was released in 2020. And I was really surprised how good the game is. And I was actually a lot more satisfied with it than Final Doom or Master Levels of Doom 2. Hold on one second. To all my subscribers, thank you for all the support. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos around old school games, hit that subscribe button to see more. Doom 64 is a direct sequel to Doom 2. This is why people call it the real Doom 3, which I always found kind of silly, but because everything that seemed to come out on the Nintendo 64 was 64 this, Mario Kart 64, Donkey Kong 64, Mario 64. So it made sense when they released a Doom game onto the Nintendo 64 that they called it Doom 64, not Doom 3, but whatever. Anyways, that's why it's called the real. It's the real Doom 3. Anyways, I digress. So Doom 2 ends, and then basically, I'm not gonna get super into the plot. Essentially, the Doom guy is still there living on Earth and everything's hunky-dory for a certain period of time until the world figures out that the demons are respawning on Mars somehow. So they send the Doom guy to go figure out why and to stop them. So that's it, you go back to Mars and you're wasting a bunch of demons as the Doom guy. It's actually pretty good. It's on par with any of the Doom games. Nobody plays Doom for these crazy, in-depth, insane stories. They play it because of the gameplay, but the plot is important too, because just playing levels without any sort of progression or without any sort of reason why you're playing through the levels is kind of boring, in my opinion at least. So it gives you a purpose to why you're doing it, and it's kind of cool. The end is kind of unique, and nowadays it kind of ties into the rebooted timeline, so it's absolutely fantastic. I was really impressed with the amount of story in the game compared to some of the previous Doom games that I played, but it's pretty much on par with Doom and Doom 2. Doom 64 was the first Doom game to have new graphics of that era. All the official releases of Doom, Doom 2, Final Doom, Master Levels, etc. They all used the same kind of graphics engine. Although they had different textures and minor changes, it was all the same. Doom 64 was the first one to get on a different engine. The Nintendo 64 engine, I think it was 64 bits, that's why it was the Nintendo 64. And as a result, it had kind of new updated graphics. So it actually looks really nice for the time period and it's really refreshing to play a Doom game from that era that has a different look than the rest of the Doom game. So it kind of gives it a fresh feel to the gameplay, which is really nice because if you play all the games that were officially released, it can get really redundant, especially since they don't change anything to the gameplay in the games before Doom 64. So it's nice to see some monsters with different kind of art and different textures now, a lot of people didn't like the new sound effects. They wanted more of the same. I actually really enjoyed the sound effects. Well, if you play the PlayStation port of Doom, it's the exact same sound design. It's made by the same guys, essentially. For me, going from Doom to Doom 64 was 
not that big of a change from a sound design perspective because I was used to playing the PlayStation port. It's nice to have different sounds and different ambience to the game, so it doesn't feel like just playing the same thing over and over again. So in short, it didn't really make that big of a difference to me since I was used to playing the PlayStation port, which uses the same sound design. Now, if you play the PC version of Doom 64, it plays really exactly the same as Doom 1 and Doom 2. It really does. The gameplay mechanics feel on point with the same level of gameplay mechanics in the original Doom games. Although it sounds different and looks a little bit different, it still gives you that old school Doom feeling. It doesn't feel new or changed in any way, shape or form. The monsters react in the same kind of way as the monsters react in the original Doom. So it plays very much the same. There are a few new additions though, and this is what like made me really enjoy the game because I was tired of playing with the same weapons over and over again. So when I got a new gun called the Unmaker, I had a blast. Now, to be honest, at first I was really disappointed with the Unmaker. It uses cells just like the plasma gun and the BFG 9000. And at first it seems like a very weak version of the plasma gun. So I was very disappointed. I was like, oh man. This new gun, it really stinks. Then I figured out you can upgrade the gun. There's certain secrets hidden throughout the game that you can find and they help you upgrade the gun. These are called demon keys. There's three of them in the game. And if you upgrade with all three demon keys, man, the Unmaker is the funnest gun in the game. It is just a blast to run around and shoot. It's like a plasma gun that like shoots a spread shot. It just is absolutely fantastic. I love that weapon. It was super fun. And it made a lot of the levels where you have big quantities of demons a blast to just blow your way through. So it was really refreshing to have a new gun that although it was very lackluster at first, over time, it gets amazing and it makes the game feel fresh. I felt like, man, I'm playing a new Doom game, a Doom game that's different. It's got something different than the rest of the Doom games. And that really made me enjoy the game. So the level design is smaller than the original Doom games. Like at the time of the N64, you have graphics and you have map size. And it was hard to have both graphics and map size. You could have one or the other. And you notice that on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 era as well. The games that focused on like these larger, grander maps generally had worse graphics than games that had smaller maps because they would take more of the hardware's power and put it towards the graphics thus taking up a bunch of space and needing to spend less memory on the size of the levels and more memory on the graphics. And the other games where you had like these bigger maps had less good graphics because they spent more memory trying to create a big open map. So I kind of feel like Doom 64 fell into the realm of they wanted to make nice pristine graphics for the time. And as a result, they had to shrink the levels to kind of have the memory to get the level of graphics that they were shooting for. Now, in my mind, it was perfectly okay because the levels, although they are smaller, they're not too small. They're, they felt kind of like the right size. I constantly felt like I was progressing through the game and not getting stuck too often. So it was good level design, albeit a bit smaller than the original Doom. The levels are a little bit different. They have a different ambience. Instead of a more action ambience, they're a little bit more horror-esque. They have very much of a action horror feel to it. The thing for me was that they had some horror attributes to them, more so than the first two games, but the game isn't scary at all. That was the thing for me, like, although it's like darker and ambient and got more scary music, I didn't find the game scary at all. So it didn't do its job of making the game scary if they were trying to make it scary but it does have a darker ambience, which is fine, which makes it a little bit different. It just isn't that scary. And I played lots of games from that time period that have scared the crap out of me, like Silent Hill, for example. And those games are horrifying, the Silent Hill game. And it doesn't matter if it's on the PlayStation 1, it's still horrifying. It's not that it couldn't have been scary, it just wasn't. And I think part of it was because it plays exactly the same as Doom 1 and Doom 2. So I was very used to how the game is going to play out and how the monsters are going to react and how the ambushes are going to work. So it wasn't that scary to me. And they didn't do any sort of storytelling to make it scarier. 
it would just go fight demons on Mars. Here's some scary ambient music and smaller, darker levels. So good, but not living up to the horror, horror standard it's kind of built up to be by some people. Now, there are a couple of cool things to the level design, like we have some new demons, specifically something called the Nightmare Imp, which is essentially an imp that runs faster and does more damage than the normal imps. So it's kind of cool to face some new enemies that make you kind of stay on your toes rather than the same old, same old that you get in the previous Doom games. Then there's the final boss. The final boss is something called the Mother Demon, and she was actually really cool to fight and kind of scary. The game as a whole wasn't that scary, but that last fight was pretty intense. So there were some pros and cons to the level design. Smaller, but not too small, with some ambience that was good, but not scary, and a couple new demons. The one thing that I think is the major con to the level design is some of the levels are hard to figure out what to do, especially when searching for the secrets. That kind of made the level design a little bit frustrating for me. Some of the secrets are pretty easy to find, but some of them are brutally hard to find, and it was a little bit frustrating that they would make them so obscure and difficult to figure out. You really had to think outside of the box to figure out some of the secrets, and it made it a little bit frustrating. So it wasn't perfect, but in general it was really good. The Doom games are full of secrets and unlockables and things to do besides just beating the game. Doom 64 does that as well. There's plenty of secrets in the game to keep you playing the game. As mentioned previously, some of the secrets are just a little bit hard to figure out and a little bit too obscure. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward and with some, you know, critical thinking, you can figure it out. The demon keys were a really cool addition, these secret levels. So there are secret levels and within the secret levels, there's a secret demon key that you use to upgrade the Unmaker, as I mentioned previously. And the first time I played through it, I was like, oh, that was kind of just a normal Doom game. And then I realized all those secrets are in there and I just had to go back to all the levels and figure out how to get those secrets so that I could upgrade the Unmaker and use it with its full power. It was it's, it was a lot of fun. So all in all, Doom 64 really surprised me. You know, there is a lot of stigma around it, but most of it comes from the time in which it was released. And that kind of negative stigma has kind of washed away a little bit over time. I really found it a fun game to play. I was surprised. I thought I wasn't going to like it that much. And although it has some problems with it, like some obscure level design, and I kind of think the ambience did flop a little bit, I was a lot more scared playing other games from that era. So I didn't find it too scary, even though they were going for a more horror-esque ambience. The game in itself as a whole is good outside of those two things. So because of those little errors in the level design, I would give the game a three and a half stars out of four, which means it's a really good game. Just a few errors in the level design keeps it from being a level four. Um, you know, an excellent, perfect game in my mind. There's no such thing as a perfect game, but it's really good. I really like it. I would say this is up there with the original Doom. It has just enough things to make it different, but still make it feel like a Doom game. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see more amazing content on old school gaming titles. Now, I'll see you in the next video.